Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. What happens so much throughout Chicago, we just gonna deal with Chicago because this is gonna be it. What happens is one brother go kill, a, kill another brother, and then it's a domino effect. Because now he kills somebody, now, now somebody else, oh, I gotta get him back. So now this other brother get killed, and then somebody else will get killed, somebody in the midst of all that gunfire, an innocent baby gets shot. An innocent six month old, three year old gets shot. So to fix the violence in our community, we have to do what we never did. It's, and that's read the Bible and actually do what it says to do. Because the Bible gives us the instructions that we need. Get uh, Leviticus 19 and 17, bro. Because one of the things that is very prevalent in our communities is what? Violence. And that's in Chicago, Detroit, you go to Louisiana, wherever you go and we at, what are we doing? Killing each other. We shooting each other down. Our, we, our sisters fighting each other. The solution is us keeping the commandments. This is one of the commandments that we must keep. That's going to help us unify together and be a one man. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So let's just use stealing. Stealing is a commandment, right? It says thou shalt not steal. Are you familiar with that? So that's a commandment. So a lot of times what goes on in our community is a brother may steal something. And he steals something from his brother, go in his house. And they, these, these boys, they supposed to be tight. And his brother stole, let's say, $20 out of his pocket. What do you think gonna happen after that? You think they gonna talk it out? Or they gonna fight? Or one of them gonna pull a gun? Right, so it's, it's, gonna be some, it's gonna be tension, but it's gonna be handled the wrong way. Because if they fight, what's likely to happen, they gonna fight. The one that's losing, don't like don't like the fact that he lost. He gonna go get a gun. Somebody gonna get shot. Uh, it depends on the person, but that's a lot of things that go on. A lot of the thing, a lot of the violence and killings that go on in our community is because of somebody stole something. It's because of slander. Somebody that said something. Adultery. Somebody that slept with somebody. Ex girlfriend, baby mama. Now they. Fight. But all of those things is because they all against the commandments. But what we're dealing with right now says, read it again. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So that's one. That's hatred. This is my brother. We all look alike. You my sister. We all look alike. We're the same people. So it said, thou shalt not hate your brother in thy heart. Meaning, okay, if my brother stole something from me, yeah, it's going to make me upset. Like why he still why he steal from me? But now the Bible is gonna tell us the solution, how to actually correct that problem. Read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So it says, Thou shalt rebuke thy neighbor. What is what does it mean to rebuke? What does rebuke mean? It means to correct. A simpler term is correct. Meaning you go and talk to your brother, your sister. Whatever they did, they stole something, they lied on you. Whatever the case may be, the Bible says, rebuke thy neighbor. Go and correct them. Hey, you stole that $20 out of my pocket. You shouldn't have did that, bro. You could have just asked him. You go and talk about it. And it's talking, it said, rebuke thy neighbor, read. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So you rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin. What is sin? I can't explain. Okay, so we'll, we'll show you. That's what we. That's what. We, that's what. That's the main reason we out here is to teach the Bible. So let's see what sin is. Read the book of First John, chapter three, and verse four. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also. 
also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So in short, when you sin, you're breaking God's commandments. Right. That's right. So if my brother steals something from me, the Bible says thou shalt not steal. So if he steals something from me and I find out that he stole from me, my job is to go and correct him with the Bible. Like, hey, you stole this $20 from me. The Bible says thou shalt not steal. You in error. And that's how we resolve issues. Because the thing about it, what happens in the what happens so much throughout Chicago, we just gonna deal with Chicago because this is where we at. What happens is one brother go kill a, kill another brother, and then it's a domino effect. Because now he kills somebody, now, now somebody else, oh I gotta get him back. So now this other brother get killed, and then somebody else will get killed somebody in the midst of all that gunfire, an innocent baby get shot. An innocent six-month-old three-year-old get shot. So to fix the violence in our community, we have to do what we never did. It's, and that's read the Bible and actually do what it says to do. Because the Bible gives us the instructions that we need. Get uh, Baruch chapter 4 and 1. No, read, read, finish, read, read, read. Take care. Thou shalt not avenge. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We the same people, but yet we shoot each other, kill each other, and it said, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of our people. That's what happens. That's why so many of us get murdered because of grudges. Because we're trying to get revenge. We're trying to pay somebody back. Say, so, say something is completely unacceptable to you, right? Uh huh. Do you think that you should immediately forgive that person? No, so, so this now that's a, when you when you address it, somebody did something to you. The first step, you, you got that Matthew 18. So this is the this is the process of what we just read in Leviticus 19. This is the process. Somebody did something to you that's detrimental. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. So the first step is you go and talk to your brother. You go talk to your sister. Whatever it is they did to you, the first step is go and talk to him. To try to resolve it. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If he hear thee, meaning, how you doing, bro? So listen up. So, so if you hear you, that means if you went and talked to your brother, your sister, whatever it is they did to you, no matter how great or how small it is, you go talk to them and they say, if he shall hear you, meaning, okay, you know what, you're right. I, I, I was wrong. I ain't, it wasn't my intention to hurt you, but I, now I see. I won't do it no more. Read. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. The beef is squat. You have gained your brother. But. That don't mean, so just to, just using an example, I know you said something they did something very detrimental. So just an example, I, I, know, I know what you're saying, but let's say my, my best friend come in my house, I got my wallet sitting on the table, my wallet got a hundred dollars in it. My friend took my hundred dollars out of my wallet and then he just took it. I find out, I go talk to him and then he like, you know what, my bad, man. I, hey, I shouldn't have took it, he gave it back to me. Forgive. So I forgive him. I'm not gonna hold no grudge against him. Yes, sir. But does that mean now? Now he come over my house again. Am I gonna sit my wallet on the table? No, sir. No, because now okay, you can. Hey, I'm not holding no grudge against you, but I'm not gonna sit my wallet. I should be still in the same I'm you not saying it. that you gonna do it, but yes, that trust gotta be rebuilt. But yeah. yet I'm not gonna hold a grudge against my brother. But it just, I'm not going to be stupid and do the same thing over again yeah. and put a stumbling block in front of him because I know he's a thief. I know he's a thief, so, okay, I'm going to make sure my wallet stay in my pocket. I'm going to make sure there's nothing available to him so him, so, because I know he's struggling with that. I know he's struggling with, now I know that he's struggling with being a thief. I'm not going to put that stumbling block in front of him. So, we you don't. Know, I want to fully answer that. That's right. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So now this is, now we, we're reading this in the sense of us having our nation together like it's supposed to be. 
So but now she can take with you one or two witnesses. These one or two witnesses is not, it's somebody that's a, uh, that's gonna be able, to, that's not gonna show partial. Hold this for me, little But you're not gonna go Hold get your best friend that's closer to you. So but, cause all they gonna do is, but I will, you, but then I'm gonna side of the But I will forgive you and will but not let up. it happen again. Listen up. So, you know what? Now if they don't hear you now, you're gonna get two two witnesses. Yeah. To be able to uh, help you, help get the matter resolved. Definitely. So you say the same issue, okay, he did X, Y, Z, he stole $100 out of my wallet. Now he not, he's saying he didn't do it. I got him on camera. He said he didn't do it, yada, yada, yada. Read. But he will not, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, so then the next step after you take the two or three witnesses, and they hear both, they hear both sides of the story, and they establish the correct that you was right, and the person still don't want to hear it. Now it goes to the church. The church is going is talking about it goes to the leaders, the the, the leaders of the community, the leaders that that actually judge matters right. And this is in the, this is in the, in the sense of us being together as a nation. Us, us being in rulership, us actually governing the things that's going on. Read what happened after that, if they still don't hear. Let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. So a publican is like a tax collector. So it says, let him be as a, as a heathen man and a publican. For sake of time, a heathen is the other nation. As a nation of Israel, we supposed to be, we supposed to be ruling the world. Yeah, that's right. Yes, we supposed, supposed to be the top yes, nation. We. That's right. And so, we still do, but we don't. And we don't have dealings with the other nation. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how. If you don't want to hear it, you okay. You like another nation. I don't want nothing to do with you. Read. And then it says, he has a publican. A publican is like a tax collector. Who likes tax collectors? Nobody. So you don't deal with. Them. Get Matthew six and oh, what's it say six and fourteen? Yes. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So as a people, if we apply that, that will fix the problems in our community. Because if you forgive, if your brother did something, he apologize, you forgive him. And that's the end of it. Ain't no need to go get no gun. Ain't no need to go and shoot him. Ain't no need to fight him. Ain't no need for all that. Because your brother, you resolve the issue. You resolve the problem. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. His word, his word.